all different types of GLs. All right, or if you look on the internet, you know, and what I have, I got all different. I got some that are plated, some that aren't, some that are hardened. Uh, and now, and so all the different size perches, different size bosses. But the one thing about them is they're all the same from right here on, as far as the machining. All the dimensions are the same, okay? So the bits work the same for them and everything. This is all the same. What's different is from here back. I have one that's got a nine inch perch that you can put three more inches of boss on there. And um, then you've got the same six inch perch and then your brackets work the same on there. And then actually if you wanted to extend that out, you could extend that out and put, put your extension on, okay? So these cost more money. This is your standard, right? So the only difference in this is this one's, this one's a, a gold zinc plated. Some of them are hardened. The hardened ones only do better in hardwood. In softwood, it doesn't make any difference. But in hardwood, it does. Also, if you have a high cyclical load, you want a hardened one. And then if you put this on here, and then, then you would be longer yet. So then you can get out, you can get out to having still a foot further away from tree, more boss in the tree, you know, a hardened one if you, if you need for the cyclical loading. So basically there's all different kinds. Don't get intimidated about it. If you call us, uh, we'll, we'll advise you of which we think is the best ones for you. But remember, we're not engineers. We just act like one. Like your fixed brackets and your sliding brackets, these are designed to be two inches out away from the tree. This is a fixed bracket here. Now, when you have a knee brace, which this is, goes out to the knee brace, you have to have a, you have to have a fixed bracket. If they had a sliding bracket, you put pressure on there it would lean down and this, bracket, and this beam would come this way. So you have to have a fixed bracket. Sometimes trees grow faster than you think. And so then you can take this out. All right. And then you can put a longer one in. All right. But you've got to remember, though, to design your tree house so you can move your beams. All right. If you design your treehouse right, in 10 years or so, when the tree grows out to the, to the beams, you can take out the one and, and put in another as long as you and then move your beam out of the way. One of the things with the GLs and all my brackets is that I use an um, inch and a quarter inch pipe over everything. Now this one here um, is, I had to replace, this one had just a regular uh, standard um, sliding beam bracket in there but the tree grew out way to it and so then I needed to move out my beam and if you look up here you can see where the beam used to be all right but and if you come down here you see that, that that's you know the the tree would be growing around this beam now except that I moved it out so part of why having that piece of pipe in there and um, is that you can pull that piece of pipe out and then you can put an extension on. The tree will grow up live to this piece of pipe, but I can take the weight off of this, undo this set screw, and I can actually take out this piece of pipe. It grows right up to it, but it, it's, it's still, you can still take it out and put another piece in. All right, if you don't want to do that, if, you, if you're thinking ahead and go, okay, I want to build a tree house that lasts 20 years to 25 years, then you got to go to one of the longer perches on there so you can hold, so you can start out holding your, um, your bracket further away from the tree or your beam further away from the tree. You can do that still with a, a short one by putting a, a, a loop extension on there. All right, but see when you hold your beam out further, then you have to support it up. You either got to put more boss in there or you have to support it from above. 
This guy here, the little shorty, is just for cables usually, all right? You just hook a cable around there, put it up on the tree, all right? And then it grows over. My engineer wanted to double up the weight on this. He wasn't, this was his first tree house that he was engineering for and he made me put in these doubles. And what this double does, and you know, I already had the GL in here. I guess I could have cabled it up to the top, but I prefer to do it this way. And so I brought this out and came back to another GL here. So I have the weight bearing of this GL here and plus it here. So this is a double. So this is one of the ways to increase the strength of your GLs is by putting another one in. This guy will fit down here. This guy fits up here. And you got a jumbo jumbo. Anyway, if you if you really need this much uh, weight bearing capacity on your treehouse that you're designing, you probably should have a professional engineer actually checking your numbers. And if I was, I would have a professional engineer check my numbers. Because remember, I only act like an engineer. Well, the thing I like about this one is this one also does it for horizontal loading. If you have a cable up above, the cable won't, won't help you in a wind load. So if you've got a big wind load and the tree's moving back and forth, uh, there's been some failures with GLs in high wind load areas. So the cable will help you hold more weight, but it won't help you with a, with a more of a horizontal wind load. And this bracket here will. Now, this works good for just increasing your load. But in sometimes when you have a tree, when you're up high in a tree and there's a lot of mobility from wind and everything, uh, you have to be sure for one to be using the hardened steel so it's springy, so it doesn't break. But also this doesn't allow you, this goes, gives you a vertical loading, but no horizontal. So if you've got big loads that go like this, this cable here doesn't stop that. But if you put in one like this, one of these doubles, all right, that's twice the, the strength this way, but also this way for a load that hits this way and hits that way, you have both of these. It's got to turn both of these and move both of these in the wood. So and if, then if you have extra bosses, um, then you, you know, that takes, that gives you more strength. With, remember with the GL, don't settle for any expensive imitations. I just wanted to thank Michael in person on film for creating such a magical place. I don't know if you get to hear all the comments that the people make uh, hanging around the campfire or when they're checking in or checking out, but it is a very special place for all ages. And uh, you know, to your wife Peggy and your family who just runs this whole place, didn't you just celebrate or recently 20 years? 20, we're coming up actually on 25 years all right, of uh, being open. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been uh, started out real small, and people thought I was crazy, but uh, I'm glad I kept with it. I can hardly believe it myself. What all everything I have up there, but it is it is quite magical. It is. I mean, every time we come here, there's something new and different, and you are crazy, <laughs> and that's why I love you. <laughs> so please keep building places for people to come and play. It's so important for the adults to come and play. I think. And we're standing in front of your beautiful house where you and Peggy live, and you built this, and we actually filmed it. Um, and there's a documentary about that online, but yeah, uh, this is one of the largest tree houses in the world, is it not? Yeah. It's how many square feet? It's 1,800 square feet. I mean, uh, there may be some larger, but none as nice as this one. It's so beautiful, the details and everything that are inside. So if you can get here any way you can to Tequilma, Oregon, to get to Out and About Tree House Resort, Tree Resort, uh, you definitely want to make this something you do in your lifetime because it is a magical place. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>